Hey everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name is Mark, and in this video, we're turning our sights on Moser Racing and their newly introduced AB9 Force Feedback Base and Flight Stick. Whilst Moser are an established name in the racing community, this is their first venture into a flight sim peripheral. And what better way to start than with a force feedback device? Before we jump in and have a look at the detail, I think I should just mention that this is a first look and not a full product review. And the reason I say that is that a force feedback device such as this is only good as its software. Now the Moser software is still under development and I'm getting both software and firmware updates almost on a weekly basis. So it's still very much a work in progress as is full program compatibility. For example, it's not yet fully functional with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So in this video, we'll be giving it a test in DCS. It's also worth mentioning at this point that the AB9 base, as well as a number of grips, are not the only products planned in the short term from Moser Racing. A throttle quadrant combined with control box, as well as rudder pedals, are expected before the end of 2024. AB9 base itself comes with an impressive list of specifications, including a solid aluminium body, multiple install options, powered by two servo motors capable of producing 9 newtons with a peak of 12. To complement the base, Moser are bringing out the MH16 grip, once again, all aluminium construction and should be available by the time this video is aired. And this will be followed with the MA3X side stick. Again, availability is expected in the near future. I'm not going to run through all the product specifications. If you want more information, visit the Moser website link in the notes below this video. One big plus of the AB9 base is that it's compatible with a range of third-party grips, including the Thrustmaster Warthog, that's what I'm using today, including Verpal, etc. Once again, details on their website. Moser will be sending me the MH16 flight grip, as they have done with the AB9 base for review purposes. And once it's fully compatible with Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course, I'll be doing a full review of both products. Force feedback devices are not inexpensive. However, Moser prices do seem competitive in the market at this time. And there's no doubt the market will get more competitive as time goes on as a number of other companies have already announced their intention to jump in, including Wing Wing, Verpal, and others. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's have a look at the product itself. It arrives in a fairly large box because it's a fairly large item. But I must say the packaging is excellent and is also heavy, being predominantly metal construction. How heavy? Sorry, I forgot to weigh it. Before I mounted it, single USB-B to A connector, and as expected, it requires its own power supply and comes with its own power pack. Again, a solid and sturdy item, and overall, the impression is one of quality and attention to detail. In addition, it comes with a number of bolts and slider brackets, which I assume are for its desk mount option, which would be an additional purchase. But now to the main event. Not only is this a large item, but it's also a very powerful force feedback device. So some very careful consideration needs to be given towards mounting the product. Desk mounting itself may be practical, but you need a sturdy desk. The shape of the body it has a slightly glossy textured finish. And in addition to the USB and power supply connectors, it comes with a number of other ports which will be to accommodate future peripherals such as the throttle, rudders and so on. These grooves are to accommodate a desk mount assembly, but there are also a number of different mounting points underneath the item. Three different positions are available, and as you'll see later in the video, the base mounting is the option that I plumbed for on my DOF H3 motion platform. The grip connector will be familiar to you if you've used Thrustmaster or Verpal products in the past. As mentioned earlier, I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog and I had absolutely no problem fitting it to the base. I've had the Thrustmaster Warthog for many, many years, a reliable and solid performer. Fairly easy and straightforward to line up the pins, tighten down the threaded ring and you're done. My Verbal grip also attached no major problems, although I did find at this time any axes on the grip only record as buttons, but that may well change in the future. It has a good range of movement and a really nice solid feel to it. As mentioned earlier, I opted to put this onto my motion rig, my DOF H3. 
It wasn't the easiest exercise, but it's done. It's in place and fitted rather nicely at just about the perfect height, so it was completely usable without me having to take off the yoke. For anyone wanting to do the same, please note that I do have the HOTUS mount kit, which is an additional purchase from Doff Reality, and I used one of the arms, mounted to a centre rail, cutting the arm short, so during movement it didn't touch on the base. Then it was just a simple case of cabling it up. Thankfully the power cable was more than long enough, and because it's centrally mounted, well the weight won't be an issue for the motion platform. As you may have noticed earlier, it does have a power button. Press it on, and it automatically self-centers. Motors are active, and you're ready to go. Within the Moser cockpit software, you can manually calibrate it, or, as I'm doing here, the auto calibration. And in terms of range of movement, I found this worked perfectly. You'll also be pleasantly surprised how quiet this unit is. As mentioned earlier, the software is still under development, but it's clear from the get-go a lot of thought has been put into the functionality. Compatibility with Microsoft Flight Simulator is expected mid to late September. It is, however, compatible with DCS and X-Plane, although there are some limitations. Although I have the Warthog grip attached, it does see it as the MH16, but as we run through the software, please bear in mind, as a work in progress, things can change. Moza have already pre-built in a number of profiles. For those sims that it's compatible with, let's have a look at DCS, for example. And here it will list different aircraft, which has a basic profile, pre-configured, which you can use as a starting point. Then make some adjustments and save it as your own profile, as I have done here. The Moza AB9 base is able to take data direct which is directly from the SIM if the SIM supports it, telemetry, which is the Moser cockpit software, or integrated force feedback, which is a combination of both. Interesting to note that for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, a planned future development is to include force feedback support. Under the basic settings, you can adjust the overall torque, dampener, amount of friction, and so on. Easy to adjust using a slider bar, percentages 0 to 100%. Under the Telemetry Force Feedback tab, reminder that's using the Moza Cockpit software, there is a much expanded range of different options, settings, and configurations available. These are the settings for DCS. And here, not all the configurations are currently operable, but include such variables such as gun firing, flap motion, spoiler or feed brake effect, ground vibration, and dynamic force. It's an impressive list of variables overall that are configurable. And then, depending on the aircraft that you're flying, be it a prop, jet or helicopter, there are further adjustments that you can make and save as presets for individual aircraft if that's something that you desired. The number of configurable options continues to expand and or be enabled. And I think the takeaway at this stage is that the software does look to be very comprehensive indeed. Under Axis Travel, you can limit or expand the amount of travel available. You'll note also the Z-axis or rudder axis that's not available by default and will require the Z-axis extension, which is an optional purchase. And in addition, the force available on the various axes can be defined depending on your personal preference and the particular aircraft that you may be flying. I have in no way gone through all the various options and variables that are available. Up to this point, I've only really tinkered around with a few settings. So let's now jump into DCS and see how it handles. The one thing that struck me almost immediately was the dynamic force effect. That is the effect of the wind on the airframe at higher speeds, greater force. And to get that flight stick in your hand to respond required a lot more pressure. Very impressive. Here I'm doing a power off stall, throttle all the way back, speed dropping off. Nose is now starting to drop, trying to hold her level, but you just know she's going to drop a wing. There she goes. There's the judder and it's reflected directly on the AB9. Heading towards the ground, time to pull up. And you can feel that airframe creaking as we bolt past 200 miles per hour. What won't show very clearly in the video is the amount of rumble coming through the joystick. Now this setting still needs uh, quite a bit more work in DCS. 
but it certainly helps to keep you focused. At about 300 miles per hour, and it's taking a considerable amount of force to get the aircraft to react as the flight stick stiffens up. As I stick my nose in the air and the speed drops off, you'll be able to see the effect of the dynamic force and how easy it is to move the joystick. Now coming up on 60 miles an hour and look how easy it is. It's this type of effect that changes something from just a haptic feedback to true force feedback. Let's try something else. Let's flip her almost on her side and do a left hand turn and drag it round without using the rudders. And the airframe should certainly complain as we approach 250 knots and there it goes. The aircraft's now really hard to control. Whoops, she's flipped herself over. Need to flip her back or this is gonna end up in tears as I'm in no way an accomplished DCS pilot. As I swing her back level, I'm getting little kicks in the joystick as a variable wind pushes up against the ailerons. I do however need to highlight that that long list of variables that you saw, not all are easily configurable or even operative at this time. But more and more is becoming enabled over time, one update after the other. Try this in VR and, well, you feel that you're right there in the cockpit, hanging on desperately to your flight stick, just the way it should be. Well, if you follow this channel at all, you'll be aware that I'm a Microsoft Flight Simulator fan and I just can't wait to give this a full test. In the Cessna 172, A2A's Comanche 250, Blackbird C310R, the A320 and of course, the F18. If you don't enable the force feedback effect, well, the joystick operates just as you would expect a normal joystick to do. But force feedback gives you that extra sense of immersion, that real sense of being there. Gets that blood pumping and raises the excitement level. And after all, for me, that's what it's all about. Give me a good dose of realism and a bigger dose of excitement and I'm happy. Well, I can see an airport there, so let's head off for a landing. Let's see if we can make this a flaming good one. I need to up those damage effects, but the joystick was kicking in my hand. While software wise there's still some work to be done as I've mentioned, but the AB9 force feedback base from Moza offers great potential at what is in today's market a reasonable price. And this product's going to feature a lot more on this channel going forward. That's probably the highest recommendation I can offer. My only major gripe is it says it's Microsoft Flight Simulator compatible, but that's not currently the case but hopefully will be soon. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. Don't forget to subscribe for more like this. See you soon and ciao for now.